Hey everybody, welcome to a new week of sixth grade math and a new topic. Today we're gonna to learn about absolute value. So by the end of the lesson today, you should understand what absolute value in mathematics means and where it's used in real life situations. Today's lesson is gonna be based out of the book, so why don't you hit pause now, go grab your textbook volume one, turn to page 161, and when you're ready, we'll be right here, ready to start. All right, thanks for grabbing your books and turning to page 161. So our intro problem says credit cards may be used to purchase items on credit and pay for them later. A portion of a credit card statement is shown below. How would you interpret the value of the ending balance? Explain your reasoning. Solve this problem any way you choose. Well, to solve this problem, I made a number line to represent our money situation. So looking at the account, I see that there's $30. Well, on a number line, we could have negative 30 and 30. If I had earned $30 and have a positive amount in my checking account or savings account, I would be on the plus side. But looking at the credit card, it says negative 30. So we need to go way down here. So if your account says negative 30, it means you have less than $0. You have you spent money that you do not have. So that's what credit is. Credit is spending a, more than you have. So if I were to make a number line, the negative $30 would be to the left of the zero on our number line. Now you're probably asking yourself, what does a number line have to do with our new topic, absolute value? So let's learn what absolute value means. So absolute value, and if we look at our definition is it's the distance from zero on a number line and distance is always positive so if we have absolute value it means how far is that number away from zero so if I'm, if I'm finding the absolute value of negative five distance would be five spaces to zero and if I'm at positive five it is still five units away from zero. So absolute value is always positive because distance is always positive. On my map, I have an arrow that represents Minnesota and kind of where we live. So if we're in Virginia, which is about the bottom of the arrow, and we're going up to Canada, it's about 100 miles roughly to the border. Okay, so if we're right here, but if we go down to the cities and we go this way, that's about 200 miles, let's say. So it, here's ground base zero, Virginia. So if I go north, it's 100 miles. Does that mean if I go south, we're going negative miles? No, positive miles if we go south, positive miles if we go north. So every distance is always positive. So absolute value means distance to zero. So let's look up on the top of our chart where we're going to deal with absolute value a little bit. So absolute value is, again, how far it is to zero. This is representing stock prices and how much they rise and fall each year. Well, this company's stock in 2015 changed 11. So it went from zero to 11, maybe it went from 20 to 31, or maybe it went from negative 20 up to negative nine. But either way, it changed 11 units. In 2014, it changed 19. So maybe it, that was worth $100 and went up to $119. Either way, it changed 19 in number. And in 2013, it would dropped $34. So it changed 34 spaces. 2012, it changed six. So the question asks, which one had the greatest amount of change? Would it be 11? 19 negative 34 or 6 so even though negative 34 is negative a negative change it is still the greatest change because 34 to 0 is the biggest distance so we're gonna say the absolute value of negative 34 and these little lines on the outside mean absolute value that had the greatest changes, the farthest away from zero. 
you have to be careful when you're writing absolute value. Once you look under the state of Minnesota, so let's say we have negative six, and I want to say absolute value of negative six, which would be equal to six. But you got to make sure you make your absolute value bars bigger than the number. Otherwise, it might look like 161 or 1 minus 61. So we got to make sure we are neat and we make our bars big as bigger than the number. All right, next we're going to jump to page 163 and go to the guided practice. So number one says, explain why negative seven has a greater absolute value than the absolute value of six. So even though negative seven is a negative number and six is positive, negative seven has a greater absolute value because it is farther away from zero. So the distance to zero is greater. So that's the reason that it is bigger or has a greater value. I'm going to say the distance to zero is more. In three through five, we are going to find the absolute value. So the absolute value of negative nine is nine. The absolute value of five and three fourths is five and three fourths. And the absolute value of negative five and five tenths is five and five tenths. So remember, absolute value is the distance to zero. In six, and seven, we're gonna use a less than, greater than, or equal sign. So we have negative nine, absolute value of negative 19 and the absolute value of negative 11. Well, this is equal to 19 and this is equal to 11 because distance is always positive. So the absolute value of negative 19 is greater. And then we have negative two and one half, or absolute value of negative two and a half, which is two and a half. And then we have two and five tenths, which is equivalent, or which is two and five tenths, which is equivalent or equal to two and a half. Let's jump down to eight through 12. It says, find each absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 46, well, how far is that to zero? It is 46 units. How about seven tenths? What's the absolute value there? Absolute value of seven tenths is seven tenths. And in 10, the absolute value of negative two thirds is two thirds. Go ahead and hit pause and do 11 and 12, please. All right, thanks for coming back. Negative 7 and 35 hundredths. Absolute value of negative 7 and 35 hundredths is positive 7 and 35 hundredths. And 12, the absolute value of negative 4 and 3 fourths is 4 and 3 fourths. So basically, you're taking the number on the inside of the absolute value bars and you make it sure it's positive. So 13 through 15, we are using the less than, greater than, or equal sign. Absolute value of 14 and absolute value of negative 21. Absolute value, or, uh, absolute value of negative 21 is bigger because that equals 21. We have an absolute value of negative 11.5, which is 11.5, and we have 11 and 3 fourths and 11 and 3 fourths is bigger there. Go ahead and hit pause and do 15 and 16 on your own. All right, thanks for coming back. On 15, we have the absolute value of negative 6 and 3 tenths and the absolute value of negative 5 and 2 tenths. So this is equivalent to 6 and 3 tenths and this is equivalent to 5 and 2 tenths. So that would be greater because it's bigger. And we have the absolute value of three and 75 hundredths, which is three and 75 hundredths. And we have the absolute value of three and three fourths, which is positive three and three fourths. So those are equivalent. In 17, we need to order absolute value of negative six, the absolute value of negative four, uh, absolute value of 11 is zero from greatest to least. So I'm gonna put numbers on them. So I'm gonna look at the biggest one. Well. This is 11 spots away from zero. This one is six spots away from zero. And absolute value of negative four is four spots away from zero. And zero is, whoops, I should have put a zero there. That is the fourth biggest. So we have the absolute value of 11. Make sure yours doesn't look like 1,101. And then we have the absolute value of negative six. And then we have the absolute value of negative four, and then we have the absolute value of zero. 
Go ahead, hit pause and do 18 by yourself, but heads up, that one is least to greatest. So it's the backwards, it's reverse of what we just did. Okay, thanks for clicking back. So we need to find the smallest number, which would be the closest number to zero. And that would be the absolute value of negative three. Then the next closest to zero would be negative three and 18 hundredths. And then we would have the absolute value of four. And then the absolute value of negative 18 would be the farthest away from zero. So that means it would be the biggest one. So from least to greatest, we have negative three absolute value of negative three then we have the absolute value of negative three and eighteen hundredths and then we have the absolute value of four and then we have the absolute value of negative eighteen so that's it for page 163 and go ahead and turn the page or actually we're going to take a pause there and from our book all right, so when I see the absolute value bars or the symbols, it looks like walls to me. And when I think of walls, I think of a house. So if I take these walls and I make a house, it would look like that. And all nice houses have green grass. And maybe they have some windows that would make it seem like a very nice happy house and when i think of happy i think of my friend mia and mia is always happy so i'm going to think of absolute value as mia's happy house so whatever goes in there might be negative but when you come out you're going to be happy so if you see mr creamers down below he's all grumpy then he goes to visit his friend mia and mia's happy house and when he leaves he is happy so Mia, thanks for being happy and making our happy house. So when I think of absolute value being negative, in the end, it's always going to be positive, just like when you leave Mia's happy house. All right, so here we have the absolute value page in mathisfun.com. So absolute value means how far a number is from zero. So when you're on this website, this is the number line you see. And if we, I'm just going to read down below, and it says, six is six away from zero and negative six is also six away from zero so here's positive six six units away here's negative six six units away so the absolute value of six is six and the absolute value of negative six is also six so if you're looking at oh sorry about that there guys so if you're looking at the website Sorry if you're going a little goofy there. There we go. Sorry about that. So we have some examples. The absolute value of negative 9 is 9. The absolute value of 3 is 3. The absolute value of 0, 0. And the absolute value of negative 156 is negative 156. So what I wanted to really show you is this little tool down here. So as I slide it to a number it says the absolute value on the left of the equal sign and on the right is the value. So if we have seven, it's gonna be always seven. If I have negative seven, it's gonna be seven, absolute value of negative seven. If I have the absolute value of negative two, it's two, positive two. Absolute value of negative nine, nine. How about five and a half, five and five tenths? It's absolute value, Would the absolute value of five and five tenths would be five and five tenths. How about negative? absolute value of negative five and five tenths which would be five and five tenths so if you want to play with this little cool tool it's on mathisfun.com go to the dictionary click on a for absolute value and then you scroll down and you'll see it when you're done becoming an expert on absolute value we are going to do our frayer model for the day so please please do your definition which is going to be the distance to zero. Characteristics, the answer will always be positive. It could be integers, it could be rational numbers, which would be decimals, fractions, and it can be zero, but the answer will always be negative. Or sorry, the answer will always be positive. Sorry about that. Examples, go ahead and do your own, but I'm just gonna say neg absolute value negative six equals six. So let's have a negative number there. 
and let's say a positive one, like the absolute value of 4 is 4. And why don't you give me a fraction also, like absolute value of 2 and 1 half would be 2 and 1 half. Non-examples, the absolute value of negative 6 equals negative 6. Definitely not true. And then let's do the absolute value of 4. Let's make the answer negative. We know we can't do that. And go ahead up and come up with your own. All right, great job getting introduced to our next topic, which is absolute value. I hope everything makes sense. If not, please reach out and let me know. So, now that we're done with the book and the video, what do I do next? Why don't you please go to Schoology, reread the update, and complete all the tasks I have there for you. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out. I can't help you if I don't know that you need help. So, go ahead, reach out. Questions for instructor, email, Zoom, whatever works best for you. I'll be there for you. So, like I said, reread those tasks, or reread the update, check out the tasks, and go ahead to the next step.